We're glad you could join us today for the Concepts of Faith broadcast. This program is dedicated to teach you how to put the Word of God to work so that it will make a positive difference in the everyday circumstances of your life. And now, here's Charles Capps. I'm glad you could join us today. We're still talking about the authority of man and Jesus. Now, to just give a quick review so some of you that haven't seen some of the other broadcasts can get in on it, God created man in his image, his likeness, and gave them dominion. Genesis chapter 1 said he gave them dominion over all the work of his hands, Psalms 8 says. So mankind was given dominion over this planet. And evidently it runs for 6,000 years. We've talked about in some of the other broadcasts, the earth lease from uh, the 12th chapter of Mark, how that Jesus portrayed the earth lease. Now, I want us to uh, go into the scriptures over to Mark, the 11th chapter, and uh, begin with uh, verse 27. In fact, I, I, let's back up a little further. Let's, let's start back up here in verse uh, 22, where Jesus said, uh, Have faith in God, for verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall say to this mountain, Be removed, be cast into the sea, shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Now this mountain he's referring to is probably not talking about removing a literal rock mountain, but a problem area in your life. In other words, Jesus is telling you if you operate in the God kind of faith, and faith cometh from the Word of God. Paul said, faith cometh by hearing the Word of God. He said, you would be able to say, if you had faith. One place he said, if you had faith as a seed, you would say. But here he, he makes a statement. Verily I say unto you, whosoever shall say to the mountain, to the problem area, be removed, be plucked up, be planted in the sea, it should, he said, <laughs> I'm getting two scriptures together here. I better read this. Whosoever shall say it to this mountain, this problem area, be removed, be thou cast in the sea, shall not doubt in his heart. In other words, don't be undecided about it, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. In other words, you have authority to proclaim what's going to happen on this planet based on the authority of the Word of God. Now, not many people have understood that, and that's the reason people talk all kinds of foolishness. It tickled me to death, laughed, I thought I'd die, dying to go, gonna die if I don't. Look, you're weakening your faith and weakening your authority when you say those things. That's unscriptural talk. The Bible said, laughter doeth good like a medicine, or a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. In other words, then you ought to be saying, I laughed till I knew I'd live forever, instead of tickle me to death. <laughs> well, we, we get into this, he goes on to say, therefore. Now, when you find the word therefore, back up and find out what it's there for. Because of this principle of operating in the authority that God has given us through his word, you can proclaim what's going to happen if you release your faith in it based on the authority of the Word of God, not just saying a bunch of stuff that you want to happen and have no Bible basis for it, because the divine energy of God is the faith that's resident in the Word of God. Now watch what he goes on to say, Therefore, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe you receive them, and you shall have them. Now, this is one of the ways that we have dominion on this planet. You can change some things around your house. You can change some things around your part of the world. Now, you're not going to change the whole world, but you can change things around your world. God gave you authority and dominion. Your physical body gives you authority on this planet. You have authority to vote. You have authority to act on the Word of God. As a believer, your authority is to exercise what God, divine right, God has given you through prayer and through speaking the Word of God in faith. Now, watch as it follows on down. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe you receive them, you shall have them. And when you stand praying, when you stand praying, forgive. Now, see, if, if you're not careful, we leave that one out. When you stand praying, forgive. Somebody said that's the reason some folks kneel and pray. They, they have to forgive if they, if they are if they stand and pray. Now watch this. He goes on to say, in verse 27, now this is, this is the part, I just want to put that in to bring you up to what Jesus is getting into here. He had dominion 
through words. Now, the, the context of this, and we'll not take time to go back into it before he said that God talked about the God kind of faith. He had said to a fig tree, no man will eat fruit from you hereafter forever. And the fig tree withered and died. Then he tells us how to operate in the same authority of faith and words. Now, verse 27, and they come again to Jerusalem, and as he was walking in the temple, they come to him, the chief scribes, uh, the chief priests, scribes, the elders, and say unto him, But what authority doest thou these things, and who gave thee the authority to do these things? Now, you know, you'd have to be deaf, dumb, blind, and ignorant not to know that this man has authority. Because you back up and read a few chapters, you find out Jesus healing the sick, raising the dead, casting out demons, uh, healing uh, people that, that came to him, stopping storms, and killing fig trees. <laughs> now, he had authority. There's no doubt about it. And they knew that. And so here's the question. But what authority doest thou these things, and who gave you this authority? Now, Jesus, being just a little smarter than these guys that came to him, here's the way he approached it. He said, I'll also ask you one question. Answer me, and I'll tell you by what authority I do these things. You know, Jesus said, don't cast your pearls before swine. He said, the baptism of John, was it from heaven or men? Well, now, when you think about that a minute, the baptism of John was of man. Now, what Jesus is doing is setting a trap for them. If they would answer this accurately, they would answer both of their questions. And then Jesus would say, you, you answered your own question, and they'd still be just as ignorant about it as they were when they started, because they, had, they did not want to know the truth. They're just trying to, to uh, get him in a corner. So the baptism of John was baptism of man. It was not the baptism from heaven. The baptism of heaven was the Holy Ghost and fire that came on the day of Pentecost. When uh, Jesus came to be baptized of John, he said, uh, John said, uh, I have need to be baptized of you. He was after that baptism from heaven then. But Jesus said, you must do it to fulfill all righteousness. So the baptism from heaven is the baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire that came on the day of Pentecost. So here's, here's what Jesus was, was saying. Their question was this. But what authority doest thou these things? The baptism of John was of man. Best thing under the old covenant, but was not good enough for the new covenant. You see, when you get over in the new covenant, uh, there was another baptism. Uh, Paul, when he came to Ephesus there, he found certain disciples, and he asked them, have you been uh, baptized since you believed, and uh, received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said, we have not even so much as heard there be any Holy Ghost. So they baptized them again, and he laid hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost, spake with tongues, and prophesied. In other words, John's baptism was not used in the New Covenant. There was a different baptism. Now, this is why I'm pointing this out, because Jesus is showing you the difference. If they'd have said, well, John's baptism of man, but they wouldn't say that because the Jews believed John was a prophet and afraid they'd get stoned. So they said, we cannot tell. Jesus said, neither do I tell you by what authority I do these things. Now, here, here's what he, the, the answer to that was. The baptism of John was of man, but John was anointed of God. Now, if they had have understood that, they would have known that Jesus was saying that uh, I'm doing this by the authority of a man because I was born on this planet. I entered in by the legal entry into this earth, and I was born here. Therefore, I have legal authority to destroy the works of the devil. But the anointing came from God. Now, you see, we read it in some of the other broadcasts. And when he went into the synagogue, stood up for to read on the Sabbath day in his own hometown. He read from Isaiah 61, which said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me. That's why Jesus healed the sick, raised the dead, cast out demons, because God anointed him. Now, he had the authority to destroy the works of the devil. 1 John 3, 8 says that Jesus uh, came to destroy, loosen, dissolve, and undo, the Amplified says, the works of the devil for that purpose. That's what he came to do. He, he had authority for 30 years, but didn't have the ability. The ability came when he was anointed with the Holy Ghost and healing power when he was baptized in the River Jordan. Now, Jesus makes this statement here. He says, 
neither do I tell you by what authority I do these things. Now, you see, we wait and read this next week, you know, or something, and we miss the whole thing. So let's read it the way Jesus said it. Neither do I tell you by what authority I do these things. A certain man planted a vineyard, set a hedge about it, digged a place for the wine vat, built a tower, let it out to the husband, when went into a foreign country. Immediately, he starts talking about the earth lease. Now, they've asked, by what authority do they have these things? And he is dealing with the earth lease here. Now, the, the people, their unbelievers, had no idea what he's talking about here. And some people today don't understand this. But you see, he is describing the earth lease. When God created man in his image and gave him authority over the earth, gave him dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, over every creeping thing. Folks, I'm telling you, it's good news to just know you have dominion over creeps today. <laughs> and here Jesus is laying it out, the earth lease. And he talks about uh, that he sent to that, he let this out, he let this vineyard out to the husbandman, and he sent to receive the fruit of it. They killed some, beat some, and he said, I have my well-beloved son, in other words, his only son, I'll send him. He said, they'll reverence him. But uh, they cast him out of the garden. They said, look, this is the heir. If we kill him, the inheritance will be ours. Now, folks, that's exactly what the devil, the demons, and the evil spirits thought. If they could kill Jesus, then the earth would be theirs. Now, you have a scripture that, that reveals the fact that uh, it says, the heavens are the Lord, but the earth have he given to the children of men. It's talking about giving a earth lease on it. Here's the earth lease that he's talking about, and uh, that's found in Psalms 115, verse 16. The heavens are the Lord, the earth hath he given to the children of men. Then Psalms 24 said, The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. He leased the planet out to mankind, but he did not give it to man. It's still the Lord's. So here you have Jesus portraying the earth lease to let us know where, by what authority, he was doing these things. He was doing it by the authority of a man, but yet the anointing was of God and the very scripture that Jesus, or the very question that Jesus asked them was a, what I call a double barrel question. If they had answered his, both of his, uh, or his one question uh, accurately, it would have answered both of their questions, but still, they still wouldn't have understood it because they were unbelievers and just trying to catch him in something that he said. But Jesus said it exactly right. Jesus had authority of a man, but he was anointed of God. Now, see, we're talking about the authority of man and Jesus, which some people know very little about. So many people believe that Jesus was operating here on earth as God. Now, I even heard a minister say on television one time that he said, when Jesus died, God died. Well, now, if you analyze that in the sense that he made that statement, now, the Bible says that God raised Jesus from the dead. Now, if God's dead, how's he going to raise Jesus from the dead? And in another place, you see, Jesus is praying to the Father and, and on the cross. And he said, My Father, my Father, why hast thou forsaken? My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Is he saying, Myself, myself, why have I forsaken myself? No, there's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. Jesus laid down his divine power and glory when he came to the earth. He was the Son of God, all right. He was the divine Son of God, but he came as a man. And this is what you need to see to understand this the way you really should understand it. Now, let's, let's, let me take you mentally to some scriptures. Uh, in the fifth chapter of John, what you find in the fifth chapter of John is the fact that Jesus went down to the pool of Bethesda. Now, some of you remember this. Uh, uh, you can take your Bible and look it up, fifth chapter of John. And there he found a man that was crippled from his mother's womb. This man had been there a long time. Uh, I believe it's 38 years he's a cripple. Now, Jesus walks up and he says to the man, Will thou be made whole? Now, he didn't say, Do you want to be made whole? Now, some translations say, do you want to be made whole? You know, he said, will you be made whole? Now, there's a difference in wanting to and a difference in will you. In fact, I've ministered by the laying on of hands sometimes and asked people, I said, will you be made whole when I lay hands on you? Some of them say, well, I hope so. That's not the right answer. There's no faith there. See, hope is not where it is. It's faith. You believe. You have to believe the Word of God. You have to proclaim what's going to happen before it happens. So Jesus said, will you be made whole? And this man starts talking about his problem. Now, he said, I have no man to help me. 
And because, you know, the story was that the angel came down a certain time and troubled the waters at this pool, and there was a multitude of impotent people there. And somebody would beat him into the pool. The first fellow in got healed. The rest of them didn't get anything. So he said, what I'm trying to get in, the others go in before me. Now Jesus said to the man, rise, take up your bed, and go home. Now look at this. Here's a man that has been crippled all these years. And Jesus said to ask the man, will you be made whole? He's going to give him an opportunity to act on the authority of Jesus' words. And uh, the man starts talking about his problem. Then Jesus said, rise, take up your bed, and walk. Now this man had been taught all of his life, religiously, that you don't carry your bed on the Sabbath day, and this just happened to be the Sabbath day. Now this fellow's got to decide, am I going to be religious and stay crippled, or am I going to act on the authority of the words of Jesus and get healed? Well, it didn't take him long to decide. He just got up, gathered up his bed and started home. Now, you can see him. He's just carrying this bed going down through there. And, and the Jews said it's the wrong day to carry a bed because, you see, they had the law and, and all these rules and regulations. And he said, uh, uh, well, the man that, that healed me said to, to carry my bed. And they said, who is that man? I can just see the old boy. He's, he stopped and just set his bed down. I can see him just leaning up on it and scratching his head. And said, you know, for the life of me, I don't know who that fellow was. Now get a hold of this. Here's a man that's been crippled all these years. Somebody walks up to him. He has no earthly idea who this man is. And he says, will you be made whole? And he starts talking about his problem. And then he says, rise, take up your bed and walk. Now you know, you'd think if the man could, he already would have. But you see, he acted in faith on the words, the authoritative words of Jesus, and active faith. Now, remember what uh, we read over there in Mark 11, 23, Whosoever shall say to the mountain, Be removed, be cast into the sea, sea shall not doubt in his heart, but believe what he saith, and will come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. This man must have released his faith in the words of Jesus. You see, we talked about in one of the broadcasts, the centurion that said, uh, uh, You don't have to come to my house. Speak the word only. My servant will be healed. He released his faith in Jesus' words. This man released his faith in the words of Jesus. Jesus spoke with such authority that here's a man that he does not know Jesus from Adam, you know, so to speak, as a, a, a phrase of speech, but he didn't know him from Adam. He didn't know who he was, and uh, he believed his words, just gathered up his bed, because nobody had ever said, gather up your bed and go home. Well, the Jews said it's the wrong day to heal folks, but now, now think of this. You know who Jesus is. You know what his word said. If a man that has no idea who Jesus is could get healed by the words that Jesus spoke. Now I'll remind you at this point. John 1 says, In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. The word was made flesh and dwelt among us. The word dwelt among us. Jesus was the personification of God's word. So God's Word here has as much power as when Jesus spoke to that man. And if we could understand that, we could enter in by faith into these things more easily because the Word has the ability to produce what Jesus produced in that man's life. In fact, uh, uh, the Apostle Paul said, The Word is nigh you, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. He said, The righteousness which is of faith says, The Word is nigh you. It's in your mouth and in your heart. In other words, it's as close to speaking the Word, proclaiming the Word, releasing faith in the Word, to be a partaker of the promise of God. Now, I want you to notice there was only one person healed there at the pool of Bethesda that day. He was the only man that got healed. There's a multitude of folks there. But now Jesus, let me show you the, the conclusion of this matter. Jesus healed the sick, raised the dead, cast out demons, and then he was crucified and died. The third day he arose. Now when Jesus arose from the dead, he had a glorified body. He has planted his, they planted his body in the grave, they thought, but he came up on the third day. <clears throat> Jesus arose from the dead. He could appear, walk through the wall and appear to his disciples. 
he can sit down and eat with them and get up and walk through the wall. Now he is restored to his divine Godhead powers. Now remember, he came in the flesh. He had a flesh and blood and bone body. But after he rose from the dead, he said, A spirit hath not flesh and bone as you see me have. In other words, he'd spilled his blood. Now he had a flesh and bone body, and it was the glory of God that filled his veins. He had spilled his blood to redeem mankind. So Jesus is now at the resurrection. When he arose from the dead, he is restored to his divine Godhead powers, and he is as much God as God was God and as the Holy Ghost was God. So Jesus has passed over into the glorified state. He is as much God as God is God. Now think with me a minute. He only healed one person at the pool of Bethesda. Now he is unlimited in his power and his anointing as God. Why didn't he go back by the pool of Bethesda and heal all of those crippled people? Why didn't he go to Damascus, you would think? that if it was legal to do so, that he would have healed all the people in the hospital. He would have healed all the people at the pool of Bethesda because he is God in his glorified power as much God as God was God and is God. But did you notice, after he arose from the dead, now listen very closely to how I say this. Don't miss it. After he arose from the dead, Jesus by physically ministering to someone by the laying on of hands or by the spoken word never healed a single person, never cast out one demon, never raised one dead person after he was restored to his divine Godhead powers. Why? Because he has now become as God as much God as God is God, and God gave the earth, the authority of the earth to man, so he's limited in what he can do unless he can do it through some man. Now that's why the apostle Paul caught this revelation, and he said, now you are, talking to the believers, now you are the body of Christ and members in particular. See, the church, the body of Christ, believers, born-again people are the only body that Jesus Christ has on this earth today. I and them and thou and me, that they may be perfect in one, is what he prayed in John 17. We have never understood that fully, but this is what he's talking about. We have become the body of Christ. We're the only body that Christ has on the earth to work through today. And because he had become as God, as much God as God was God, when he arose from the dead, that's the reason he did not heal the sick, did not destroy the works of the devil, because the earth lease was still in effect. And until the earth lease expires, God is limited somewhat in what he can do in the earth unless he does it through mankind. And this is why you see that Jesus did not physically minister to people, people in this glorified state. Now, don't misunderstand me. I've had people write me and say, Brother Caps, I know that people's been healed by Jesus. Certainly they have. He's still in the healing business. But I'm talking about from the time he rose from the dead until he ascended to the Father, Jesus did not physically minister to anyone and get them healed, did not do one single miracle. Now, somebody said he walked through the wall, but that's not a miracle when you have a glorified body. We're going to be able to do that when we're transformed and changed also. But the point is, and I think you can see it now, that Jesus had become, had been restored to his divine Godhead powers as God, and it was illegal according to the Word of God, to destroy the works of the devil. So he stood on the mountain in the 28th chap tra chapter of Matthew, and Mark 16 records it, and said, All power is given to me both in heaven and in earth. And he said, Now go ye in, in my name, cast out demons, speak with new tongues, lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. I used to say, if he had all authority, why did he tell me to go? Because he delegated that authority to the body of Christ because since he had become restored to his Godhead powers, then man had to do it. He had to work through man on the earth until the earth lease expired. And this will help you understand how God wants to work through you to heal the sick, cast out demons, and exercise your authority and dominion on the planet earth. It's yours. Act on it. Hallelujah. I don't know whether it helped you, but I've talked myself happy. Now, before we leave the broadcast today, 
I want to make available to you. Now, we've, we have offered uh, in some of the other broadcasts a uh, four audio cassette series on, that was done in a live seminar. But some of you I know would like to have the uh, videos of the teaching that we've done here on the television, and, and it's also on radio, but uh, the exact thing, because, you know, sometimes it don't turn out the same. It's basically the same teaching, but sometimes we'll say things in one place that, you know, we didn't say in the other, and, and people sometimes want the video instead of the audio. So we have the offer this week is uh, offer number 2020. In fact, that would be 2020. Sound like good vision to me. I don't know about you. Yeah, 2020 vision. It'll give you 2020 vision concerning the authority of man and Jesus. It's called the authority of man and Jesus. It's a B1 video. It's a 120-minute video, two-hour video, and it has four, uh, the last four programs, the broadcasts that we've done uh, are the four broadcasts that we did on this series called the authority of man and Jesus. And it's a uh, VHS video, $20, just write to me, Charles Capps, Box 69, England, Arkansas, zip code 72046. Ask for video offer, our uh, offer number 2020 or 2020, and it's $20. Now, you know, we, we started with this, teaching this, uh, for in Genesis 1. Some of you may have just got in on the last part of the broadcast, and, and I know that it's easy to criticize something, folks, if, if you hadn't heard the whole teaching. And some of you may got in on the last uh, session that I taught, uh, this last broadcast, and, and you'd say, well, now, I don't know whether that's right or not. That don't sound right to me. Well, see, if you have all the information that we taught in the other broadcast, it'll help you see it. See, sometimes we don't have enough information to make quality decision. So it's important that you get all of the teaching because, you know, in a 30-minute broadcast, you cannot say everything and wrap up all the loose ends that needs to be wrapped up. But uh, in, in the uh, four 30-minute broadcasts, we've done, uh, I think, a pretty good job of pulling the loose ends together so you can understand the thing. You know, I had a fellow criticize one time because we didn't preach the whole Word of God. Well, you can't do it in 30 minutes, you know. Now, this is offer number 2020, or 2020. It's $20. Just write to me, Charles Capps, Box 69, England, Arkansas, zip code 72046. Ask for offer 2020. One VHS video, $20. Our toll-free order number, 1-877-396-9400. one 396 9400 396-9400. Until next time, this is Charles Kapp reminding you that the devil is defeated, God is exalted, and yes, Jesus is Lord. We're glad you could join us today for the Concepts of Faith broadcast. This program is dedicated to teach you how to put the Word of God to work so that it will make a positive difference in the everyday circumstances of your life. To order the product offered on today's program, call 1-877-396-9400. For more information about Charles Capps Ministries or for a schedule of meetings, write to Charles Capps Ministries, P.O. Box 69, England, Arkansas, 72046. This broadcast has been sponsored by Charles Capps Ministries and our partners in this area.